Hey there, it's Sean Bailey, the Sales Funnel Nerd, and welcome to this video today where we're going to take a little bit of a departure from sales funnels in general and just talk about one of the components of a good sales funnel, and that's email automation. So you can see I've kind of stripped away on this blueprint here. This is a um, kind of a basic funnel where someone arrives at our landing page, uh, opts in to get some type of free information, and then gets put onto our email list. And then we hit them with a lead nurturing sequence to essentially push them towards um, our sales page or whatever our offer is and get them to become a customer once they become a customer and then we're gonna have them go through a onboarding or new customer sequence depending on what our product is maybe it's just a single email for customers maybe it's a whole sequence of emails we want them to go through and so once they've joined our list here we want to have them get those nurturing emails right up until they become a customer and then we want them to stop getting those emails and just get our our new customer email now this used to be um, kind of difficult to set up here. So we'll talk about the old way and how things were. So the old way of doing things involved using multiple lists. It also involved moving people from one list to another, which wasn't always easy depending on your email provider. I definitely found that with my autoresponder service that it wasn't easy to manage multiple lists and move people around with ease. Now, in order to do this with the autoresponder service I was using, I needed to use some type of third-party solution or else it was a whole lot of trial and error, uh, which is never a whole lot of fun. So that was the old way. Now, the new way of doing things is that we have a single list. This is everything is managed with tags. Uh, this provides us for some true marketing automation. And the nice thing about uh, this, what I'm going to show you here, is that it uses visual workflows that let you manage things easier. So first and foremost, what's a workflow? So workflow is a visual marketing funnel that lets you build powerful automated marketing systems. Best thing about these workflows, as I'm going to show you here, because we're going to dive into one and kind of tear it apart, is that you don't need any kind of coding or special skills. So this is a sample workflow. This is the one that I'm going to show you here for kind of your basic sales funnel. So you can see in this workflow, there's a lot of elements, but really there's only about six main pieces in this, and I'm gonna show you. Now with a workflow, there's uh, it starts at the top and then it runs vertically. With my blueprints, they usually go left to right. With this, with uh, these blueprints, or sorry, with these workflows in Drip, a Drip is the automated email service that I use, and that's where I, where I build these workflows and what I'll be demonstrating for you here today. So as you can see, workflows have an entry point at the start, and then in this particular workflow, there's two exits. So exits is when the workflow comes to an end, essentially. So the reason for the two exits at the bottom, I'm going to kind of cover as we break this down. Uh, but like I said, there's about six pieces to this whole workflow that are important here. So the first thing that happens, we're going to go into each one in detail here. So you're going to have a complete understanding of this once we're done. But the first item is that they get tagged on the way in. Now, tag helps um, tell me what form they submitted, what lead bag that they requested, uh, gives me information about them. So that when I look at my list of subscribers, I look at their tags above them, and it's going to tell me a complete story about this particular subscriber. So below that, it kind of forks, and that's the nice thing about these workflows, is that you do two things at once if you need to. So what I wanna do is deliver them a lead magnet and email, and on the other side of the fork, number three there, is a nurturing sequence. So that's the campaign that's designed to take them from being a lead into a customer. Now below that, the fork comes together, and you'll see there's a delay, and that's to let the campaign run. Uh, number five, you can see that's a goal. So the, our goal ultimately is that we want them to become a customer. So we have a goal set up there. And number six is a tag for if they don't become a customer and they complete this workflow, um, we apply a tag to them to let the, to let me know uh, that they've entered this workflow and completed it and just basically provide information when I look at their subscriber info. Tags also help let you um, create segments in your list as well. So that's also another reason why you want to use tags. So let's jump into this and tear it apart here and break it down. So the first thing, like I said, they get tagged at the start of the workflow. So if we have a look at number one and kind of zoom in here, so we see the trigger to start this whole workflow is that they submit a form. So they've landed at your landing page and they see uh, the part where it says enter your name and email and I'll send this freebie over to you. So they hit submit and that's it. So they submitted this form and this starts the workflow. So the first thing that happens is for this particular one, the sample that I've got here is they get applied tag that says funnel blueprint so i know that they've come to my website because they want my cool funnel blueprints so that's the tag that gets applied to them 
Now the next thing is that, that I need to actually send these blueprints to them. So what I do is I send them a lead magnet delivery email. And that's on one side, that's on the left-hand side of the fork here, as we can see, number two. So let's zoom in there. So here we see uh, it forks and then it comes down. And then the first thing that it does, is says it sends them an email that says, here's your funnel blueprint. And then use a little tiny bit of code there to inject their first name. So it's personalized. The next thing that happens is we send them the lead nurturing campaign. So a campaign is going to be a series of emails. In this particular example, it's on the right-hand side of my fork here. So if we zoom in, we see the first thing that happens is there's a delay of three minutes. Why is that? Because I send them the lead magnet delivery email on the other side. So I'm going to send that email. I want them to actually open and check that out and kind of be like, wow, this is a, an awesome set of blueprints. And then three minutes later, then comes the first email in my funnel blueprint welcome campaign. So here we can see in the campaign itself, this campaign is composed of four emails. So there's four emails in this campaign. The first one is gonna get sent out immediately and all the rest come one day after that. So number four, the fourth piece in this is a delay to let the campaign run. So it's basically a campaign plus one day. So it was a four email campaign. When we zoom in, we see uh, this is at the bottom of the fork and I'll explain why this is. So we zoom in and we see it weighs five days and then it resumes. So what does that mean? It resumes the workflow. Now the reason we need to have this delay in here is because the workflow will just keep marching along unless you put a delay in. Even though in the previous step we told it to send an email campaign of four days, which it will, it'll send the first one off and the rest will come sequentially after that. But the workflow does not wait. It will go down to the next step here. So this is why we have to stop it and tell it to wait and let that campaign run. While that campaign's running, people are going to get emails that are going to direct them towards our sales message. And that's going to lead to the next part here, which is going to be our goal. So the goal here is that we want them to go and purchase our product. Or in this case here, it's a digital product, so I know when they get to my order confirmation page that they've purchased. So all I have to do is use the links for the order confirmation page. We have a look here. So after the delay, we can see that it forks again because I want two exits. They're either going to buy or they're not and then go on to maybe the next workflow that I send them through. So the nice thing about goals, it doesn't matter where they are in the workflow. If they go and actually complete this goal, it will pull them from that campaign down to this point here. And then we can see the next thing that happens is they get applied with a tag that tells me that they're a customer because I want to have that ability to segment in my list of subscribers and know who's a customer and who's not. So they get applied with a tag that lets me know that they're a customer and then that's it. They exit this workflow. But what I could do is I could have another step under there and just send an initial, maybe my onboarding sequence, my email for my new customer. So I could add another step right below that. You can see the plus underneath where it says where it has the tag there. And then I would just add another step right into the workflow. Nothing special, I don't have to do anything fancy. Uh, it would just let me add a step that would say send a one-off email and then below that I would I'd paste in uh, the body of the email to be. That's super easy to go in and manipulate and adjust these workflows. But if they become, the nice thing about this is that once they become a customer, it will pull them down to this point and exit the workflow. So if they've got the first email from me and they read it and they're like, okay, that's great. Uh, then the next day they get the second email. They go and they click and they go over to the sales messages and they're like, you know what, I am going to buy this. And they click and buy. I don't have to worry about them getting two more emails saying, hey, you should go buy this when they've already bought because that's just going to annoy them. So that's one of the fantastic features about uh, these workflows and Drip in general. So on the other side, we can see number six is that they get tagged again. So what this is, is basically a reference to let me know here. It's on the other side of the fork near the bottom, number six. So if we zoom in, we see... Uh, that they get tagged with completed FBP welcome. So I know when I see look at their subscriber info uh, that they came in and that they went through the entire campaign and that they didn't go by. And um, it just tells me whatever information I need to know as far as them completing this workflow. Nice thing about tags is we can use tags to start other workflows. So if they don't buy, they get tagged with this completed uh, the FBP welcome. So I can have another workflow and the trigger for that at the top is that this tag got applied. So now I send them a new campaign saying, okay, maybe they weren't interested in this. Uh, maybe they're interested in that. And we can start chaining workflows together. And you can see once you start 
uh, working with these, it's really limited to your own kind of creativity as far as the type of automation and uh, things you want to set up. My advice is to figure out what you want to happen, your goals, and kind of map that out and then start creating your workflows versus going into a workflow and trying to hammer out something. You will kind of get kind of lost and maybe a little bit, uh, I don't know, overwhelmed with the amount of stuff in there. But Overall, it looks like a lot when you're using Drip, but it's not that bad. So that's why we have our completed FBP welcome tag at the bottom of our workflow here. And then after that, uh, they exit and move on to the next workflow or whatever we want to have planned for them. So there you go. That's how easy it is to set up some email automation using the Drip email service. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. So if you like this video, you'll love this next part, because if you've ever wanted to set up an automated email marketing solution, well, then you're in luck, because I've shared this workflow with you below. See, this free workflow that I've called the free lead magnet workflow can go straight into your Drip account. And if you don't have one, you can sign up for free. You see, Drip is 100% free until you get your first 100 subscribers. Just click the link below or go check it out over at seanbailey.com slash free workflow. Thanks for watching this video. Take care.